Welcome to Imagination Station. My name is Justin White, and today we're going to be talking about tornadoes. Now, whenever we think about severe weather, probably one of the uh, most likely things that come to your mind are tornadoes. We have them commonly here in North Carolina, as well as throughout the rest of the United States, especially the Midwestern portion of, the, of North America. Um, in fact, if you were to think about where tornadoes really happen, most likely you probably only think they happen in, um, in North America. However, they actually happen worldwide. Um, in fact, outside of the United States, which gets about 1,200 tornadoes per year, um, the, second, the top two countries outside of us that have tornadoes are Bangladesh and Argentina. Um, so they actually get them worldwide. Now, tornadoes come in all different shapes uh, and sizes. Um, in fact, tornadoes are actually a violent uh, part of these uh, thunderstorms um, in which we get, uh, you get high and low pressure and that mix together that create a funnel cloud. Um, and then if it wasn't for the fact that you have uh, rain, uh, raindrops as well as debris and dust, you would never, you would never see the funnel itself actually. Uh, so tornadoes are also something that is relatively still a mystery to science as far as how they actually uh, work. Um, and that's one thing meteorologists are constantly trying to learn more about um, is looking at how that tornado forms um, and where that tornado is going to go. Now, the tornado usually starts out at the base of the thunderstorm, and then most of the time will actually come down to the ground, but it is possible for them to actually come off the ground and then touch back down, as, um, if you've seen movies like Twister before, uh, or even a tornado uh, in real life, uh, you'll know they are very unpredictable and very dangerous, um, especially in the way that they are able to pick up debris. Uh, this includes cars, uh, trees and so forth, um, and then toss them out even miles away from where the epicenter of the tornado is. Now, torna uh, the, the tornado we're going to look at specifically today that you can actually replicate in your classroom is called a fire tornado or a fire whirl. Um, a lot of times, you're really not going to see these unless you go to an area where you have a fire, of course, going on. Um, in California, where they ha commonly will have wildfires, uh, especially in the Rocky Mountain por portion of California, um, and you have a lot of winds coming in through valleys, uh, is where you actually see these fire whirls take shape. Uh, so they are, in fact, very dangerous, um, as opposed to your uh, least dangerous, uh, which is going to be your dust devil. Um, if you play baseball, you've probably seen uh, wind swirling around on the field, and you can see that dust pick up. That technically would be a dust devil. Um, and that's just one of the six types of tornadoes. Um, as far as how we rate tornadoes, they, we rate them on an F scale, one through five, um, and that is uh, dependent upon the wind speed and then how much damage is done. So there's really no way to tell the, uh, the ranking of a tornado until actually it's already um, has passed through. Uh, but the tornado that we're going to do today, uh, we are going to make a fire whirl uh, that you can actually replicate in your classroom. Um, of course, this is an experiment that you want to do with adult supervision, um, and you want to make sure you have uh, safety equipment, such as a fire extinguisher, um, as well as some safety gloves, um, preferably fireproof, um, that uh, you can use. So the first thing you're going to use is we're going to get a turntable um, or a Lazy Susan that you can pick up at any uh, homewares department store. Uh, we're going to use a sterno. Um, you can also use a glass bowl uh, with lighter fluid and co uh, cotton balls um, as your fire source, but today we're going to be using a sterno, uh, which you can get at any camp uh, or outdoor supplies uh, store. Um, and we're going to use a mesh trash can. Now the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to set or open up our sterno, and we're going to go ahead and light that up. Now, if you notice, when I turn and make, make our uh, motion, you don't really see much as far as the, an actual tornado taking shape. However, the thing I need to add is a mesh trash can. Now, you have to use a mesh trash can uh, because we have all these holes that are along the, the, the sides of the trash can. Uh, this allows air to come in through it at uh, multiple angles um, as we turn. So I will go ahead and put our sterno back in here, back in the middle. And when we start to turn, you 
you, that went, the way the air is coming into our trash can will actually create a column um, of fire that basically resembles a tornado. This is exactly what happens whenever you have a forest fire or a fire in general where you have a lot of wind coming into one area. Um, and that uh, circular motion is going to create that fire whirl. Um, it's even possible that if a, uh, let's say for example, a tornado goes through an area um, and a gas line is broken and you have flames shooting up, if that tornado goes through that, uh, that fire, then it could actually, that fire can be sucked up into the tornado and would appear to be a uh, fire whirl as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually, uh, instead of using a sterno, we're going to do uh, an part of the fire whirl experiment to hopefully make it a little bit more uh, visually appealing um, and also a little bit more dramatic. So what we're going to use for this is you're going to use cotton balls, lighter fluid, and then a little glass bowl like this that we're going to set in the middle of our, tra of our trash can. So I'm going to go ahead and put a few uh, cotton balls in here. And we're going to add some lighter fluid. And one of the other things that you want to always uh, remember to uh, be uh, as a precaution is to have something to cover up the fire um, in case it does get out of control or whenever you're ready to put it out. Um, so in this case, we're going to be using a beaker that we can use to extinguish the fire um, because if you know anything about fire, fire feeds off of oxygen. Um, and the thing you want to do, especially when dealing with a gas fire, is you want to uh, cut off its oxygen supply, and that's the easiest way to get that fire to go out. So we'll go ahead and... First of all, get my gloves on, just in case the fire gets out of control. And you can see we got our fire going, um, and so this one should be visual, much more visually appealing. And you can see that as it spins, that air blows around the fire, causing it to uh, get into a column there. And so just to put it up, all you got to do is put the beaker on top, and that extinguishes the fire. Um, and also prevents you from catching anything else on fire. So these are just one, that's just one way that you can actually uh, experiment with tornadoes in your classroom. Um, of course, you always want to make sure that you proper, uh, practice proper uh, fire safety as well along with that. Uh, but it's a good illustration as far as how tornadoes are formed uh, and how they uh, can, actu can actually uh, work um, and how they rotate, where you can actually see the actual rotation um, of, the, of the funnel cloud. Um, so I uh, hope you guys learned a little bit more about tornadoes today. Uh, of course, always uh, proceed with caution if you are really interested in tornadoes or one of those uh, tornado chasing type. Uh, we hope to see you guys at Imagination Station, um, and we uh, look forward to bringing you more science experiments as we go throughout the year.